So greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while since we've done a real board video. Uh, you'll notice that I did not forget to put the glorious lighting back up, so we have an actual clean board for today. Now, for those of you who have uh, OCD, I, I will take a moment to ruin your day completely and point out the downside of recording and not doing all green screen filtering uh, after recording and just uploading the video later is that I have fewer features to work with while, you know, eliminating said green screen. The result of which I have no way to deal with shadows so you're noticing a green edge along the left hand side of the board. I do apologize for that but I can absolutely not do anything about it so we're gonna live with it. Hope it's not too obnoxious. If it is, oops. All right, so as you can see, we are gonna go over a Cho Chahan game. Uh, Cho Chahan is someone who you've seen me go over many times before in the past. Who White is, I don't know, and I'm not gonna try to pronounce his name either because I have no idea how X-I-A-O is pronounced in Chinese. I have no idea, so we're not gonna go there. Suffice to say, this is an interesting game. Now, granted, I like to say that all the games that I go over are in fact interesting. So it doesn't tell you a whole lot, but there are some nifty little exchanges being made here. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, so let's see, Cho Chahan opens up upper left, upper right, three, four. This is a modern game I want to point out. So it was entirely plausible that we would see a game featuring AlphaGo-like attempts. That is, that is certainly a possibility. Ah, certainly a possibility. We have, an, we have a 3-4 stone. We have a 3-4 stone. You know what that means. You know what that means. We could go here for white. And then we have like an AlphaGo-like idea here, right? But black fires a stone off the board. No, there we go. Black goes diagonal. What do you do? Can you still go AlphaGo-like if you do a diagonal opening? Answer, who cares? Instead, we're just going to have three, four points all over the place. That tells us a couple of things. One, diagonal opening usually says we're in for a territorial game. The reason being is because it's hard to actually make a framework when all you have is a corner. If you had another corner, then, you know, you could make uh, easy peasy frameworks by tying your corners together. But when your corners are... Uh, diagonal across the board, then there's no real way for you to tie your corners together short of playing something like this, which, okay, I almost said is never seen, but I will say it's not seen nowadays. It's not seen nowadays. There, there have been, there's been uh, a player that pops into my mind that did try to do interesting things to try to tie those corners together. But we're not going over that today. So instead, we're anticipating a territorial game. And the three, four points adopted by all players here kind of reflect that as well. Is there a schedule? There is never a schedule on Saturdays. Saturdays, we just do whatever I feel like. All right. So black approaches low. Why does he approach low? Because we're in a territorial game. We're not into an influential game. We know that because of what we just went over. So we approach low because third line is territorial. Right, nice and territorial game. White takes an enclosure. Why? Because he's grabbing them territories. Right, grabbing them territories. Territorial game. In for a territorial game means we're going to get territorial enclosures, maybe a territorial extension. Maybe we'll get to territorially approach later on. Wasn't the lower... Oh, yeah, sorry. That was facing that way. All right, so what do we do now? We could follow up, get some influence. We could follow up and pincer. We could take our own enclosure. Possibilities, possibilities, possibilities. Black says, 
we are still going to exist in the realm of fast framework. And thus we are going to shoulder hit our opponent, taking the low enclosure. Now, if we play this way as white, then we can kind of expect black to be able to keep growing. And potentially, of course, as a result of that, potentially drop down and get like a wall for that area, maybe. Instead, white says, no, you are going to be into the center, good sir. You're going to be going that way, and you're going to be high up that way. All that good stuff. Black attaches again. Right. We can see here that he has the idea to use the strong area that we see here. Right? Nice strong area that we see here. And with this nice strong area, we're going to get as much strength for ourselves as we can by borrowing strength off the corner. Because the corner can't really be made much stronger than it is right now. So we can do a shoulder and attachments to it to see if we get free moves. White tries to limit as many free moves as can by not playing the Hane. The Hane might go in something like this as a result. And then we've got free moves, right? Getting more and more of them free moves. Instead, he simply drops down, or sorry, uh, drops up. No more free moves to his opponent, except for this one. There's this one still. But something like that would come later. In the meantime, Black uses the light stones here to kind of develop a little bit of a Kobayashi here. Which is very interesting immediately. Because we open the game diagonally, we're thinking to ourselves, okay, we're playing a territorial game, right? Our opponent tried to go hardcore for some territory. He immediately used the force moves at his disposal to adjust his strategy. We're now kind of maybe flirting with the idea of building into the center now. White pincers in such a way that it lets him approach the corner here a little bit easier, while applying some pressure to stone. Now, one thing about pincers is the farther away you pincer, the less pressure you are applying to your opponent. Even if we get kicked now here, for example, let's say we get kicked. Let's say white decides to do something like this. We can still get a uh, base here because the pincer is so far away. So the further away the pincer is, the more inclined we are to think, well, maybe we don't have to respond to it just yet. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty light. It's pretty light. Pretty light. So since we just looked at that other variation, and since we saw in that other variation our opponent gets pretty strong, he gets a base, our pincering stone does not, it stands to reason that we do not kick, and we're going to pincer again which is one of the reasons why I would never have picked this variation, because I don't like having to pincer from the pincer. That always feels a little bit redundant, which is why I would have expected something a bit more like this or something even tighter. That way when we kick here, we can't really get a base for this group, if that's how we wanted to follow up. So this is an interesting choice by White. You can see here the developmental idea in full force by black. We're trying to develop here quickly. We're now leaning over here to see if we can uh, do something there as well. We're not simply trying to change directions and build this area, for example. We're still um, kind of going along the same idea that we've had now for a while, which is let's see how far and how fast we can develop this area of the board. 
and is going to follow it up by leaning here and hopefully getting a wall for himself. White says, okay, take your wall. Black says, okay, I think I will. Great thing about this, as everyone should know from here, when we have these two stones and the jump, it enables us to play uh, the hit here, because pushing through and cutting is usually a, not regarded as a very good idea when there's uh, the push and the cut available in the top as well. However, I mention that specifically because that is precisely what white tries to do. Tries to push, and black says, ooh, key, I'm going to block you then. White decides to come down like so. We activate the cut. Now we figure out what is it that our opponent wants to do. What is what is it we're doing right now? We get blocked. We get cut. You can see here, if we uh, Atari here, black can Atari here, we take, and this doesn't work, but it allows us to play here, into here, and then we have the corner, right? Because of the forcing moves. You can see that, I assume, yeah? Like if white takes here, we would Atari, and then we would, whoa, then we would Atari, and then we would Atari, and then we could just fix, so we stole in the corner, right, right, right. So we cannot Atari that one stone, we have to connect, like so. We get to now ladder. Now the ladder seems to be going pretty diagonal across the board. How convenient is that? So instead, white says, I'm going to ladder break now. White, black has no choice but to Atari. Get to take the stone. Um, boop. And now we're getting into a little bit of a fight. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of a fight. Because ideally black doesn't want to lose these stones, and ideally white doesn't want to lose these stones. So the question is, what kind of uh, trade can they come to? Now the first thing about this fight, the most important thing about fighting like this, is figuring out where your sente moves are. For example, regardless of what happens, this is a big move by white right now. It allows it to completely connect up because we can't Hane here at the moment as black. So, one interesting way to defend that in Sente is to play something like this. In Sente because the top stones obviously die if we ignore it. So we're not going to ignore it. We play our forcing move first because we can Atari, Hane, Atari, Hane, and then this only ever has two liberties, two, three at the moment, right? So it's safe to do. So they're both very, very aware of forcing moves. That was a forcing move, we get to connect. Forcing moves gone, time to go back and live. Black connects. Why does black connect? Because this is still a thing. We could Atari, take Atari, and then we can't make two eyes here as white. So this seems like it's very much a forcing move. However, that takes a lot of liberties. So we can play here again and threaten to surround. 
Gonna go ahead and defend. Going to play severely against the top group. And then this exchange is interesting. This is like the first exchange of the game, the first of many. As you can see here, there's a slight issue with playing this way. We can Atari, and we do. White's going to extend, but that's as far as we can go. Otherwise, Atari, and then we're going to take, no matter what wall we get played. So, black has to take. Okay. This is now a free move. So, first exchange is uh, influence for life. And now that black is completely alive here, now that black is completely alive here, white goes back and lives completely in the corner. Okay, so far, so good. Now, ideally speaking, at this point in the game, if I was playing a basic game, I'd be like, all right, that's pretty much resolved. Now let's just go to our weakest group right now and make it strong. So I would be saying maybe play something like this, maybe playing something like this, maybe just coming out. I don't really care where you play. Uh, they're good moves. Get yourself shaped. Make sure you're not going to be in trouble. Excellent. 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 By playing that way, we make the game less complicated. However, when have you known Korean Nine Dons? to play less complicated. Yeah. Probably can't think of very very many... Uh, can't really think of many examples, can you? So this is not going to get less complicated. It's going to get more complicated. So I have a question for all of you. If you're going to try to make this game more complicated, where do you think you would play? Run out the K4 stone? What's K4? Is K4 what I think it is? Yeah, that's what I think it is. Now, if you saw your opponent, be honest, if you saw your opponent running out the K4 stone, what do you think? Would you be like, ooh, that's a good move? Or would you think they're overplaying? I think jerk. Yeah, 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 uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Large extension from R4. See, you're thinking rational. You're being rational. That, that would be a rational idea. Like, yeah, I'm not going to run out that stone. I'm just going to force him to kill it. I'm taking territory. He can take the one stone here and there, right? This, this would be more in line with our basic series. This would be more in line maybe even with reactive fighting. But here's a sneak peek in proactive fighting. We've got groups that are kinda, kinda so-so, but we are the ones calling the shots this game. And we're going to pull out our stones. Our groups are probably fine. Let's make things more fun. Stupid me, play my rational ideas. I know, right? Don't worry, you'll get over them. White immediately jumps on it, like, what are you... You're not going to defend yourself? What if I attack you? Are you crazy? It's like, alright, I'm going to respond once. Responding once. This move is fascinating. This move is threatening so much. We're threatening to like come down. We're threatening to surround. We can jump out pretty far from it. This move is kind of this move is kind of cute. This is this is a cute move. White's like, "All right. Let's get out of there." Maintaining strength against the group. 
Oh, yeah, you can also, yep, true, 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 true. You can also make a knight if you need to by playing here. That's also true. All right, white's out. We move to kill stones. Black is not screwing around. He's like, dude, I'm going to surround you or I'm going to cut you. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? You choose, my man. You choose. It seems like we're in a very, very scary position, doesn't it? It's like, I mean, ah, we need, we can't just let this go. But if we do, but I mean, if we protect it, uh, I mean, what's going to happen to our group over here? And if we like come out or something, then what do we, what do we do over there? Ideally speaking, we would want to move that sente to defend that cutting point, right? That's what we want. We want to we want a sente move. So cute move begets cute move. This was a cute move by Black. I like the strength of it. But White's got his own cute move. He's threatening a co for the top group. So it looks like we found our way to defend that little cutting point. Sorry, I didn't ask you guys to guess the next move. I wasn't I was pretty certain people would probably not be able to find that little guy. Now, black cuts it anyway, because now when we take, the stones are going to be an Atari. So it kind of makes the co a little bit larger by the fact that if white initiates it, then we have these three stones in Atari. So that settled we come out. But we played the move, right? We played the move. So we're going all in now. We had a cute move. We played the cute move. The attack, the cut though is really great because as you can see now, when black takes, that's an Atari. That's amazing. That instantly up the value of the co right now because it's not just black trying to co for like a connection. Black is now co for the three stones, which connects his group up. So a little complicated, but very nice. Takes. And then uh, I think that goes that way, right? Uh, do 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 do. Yes. I am over three k followers, indeed. Happened a couple of days ago. I tweeted about it, in fact. So Black says, "All right." How about this? I offer those stones in exchange for yours. Now, if we say no, think about how many co-threats are going to be here. We're going to have like the co-threat here. We're going to have surrounding co-threats. It's a co-factory, right? This right here would be a co-factory if we kept trying to resist giving this up for the top. So white does not resist that threat and instead moves to kill. Because there's simply too many threats over here if we keep trying to fight it. Uh, 
this is a really cool move. If we were simply were to play here, then the question would become, well, does this, are we really killing anything here? It becomes a little bit of a weird life and death, uh, right? But instead he plays here, ensuring the uh, base can't grow any further, and this move won't matter because we can just surround. So very, very confident, very, very confident. Take. So it looks like we made an exchange. Top for the left. But now it's Black's move. Where do you think Black should play next? Where is the next largest point on the board? Do you ensure that we can't cut that this group can't come out again? Do you ensure that your corner's got the enclosure? Do we try to build on the bottom? Do we expand to the right-hand side? Do we do something else? Q18. That is, am I, am I coordinates correct? Oh, Q18, so that's the bottom of the board. Okay, so Q18 is this one, I see. All right, there'd be something else. Too many choices. You gotta make, you gotta make decisions, man. If you play Go, you can't just give up Sentai over and over and over again. Well, okay, you probably could, depending on your rank, but it's not a good idea. J8-ish. What is J8-ish? J8-ish? What is J8-ish? J8-ish? Oh, J8-ish. I see J8-ish. J8-ish is like somewhere in here or something. I got it. I can't tell exact coordinates because I'm across the room. I can't quite make it out on the monitor, sorry. Yeah, somewhere in here to connect things up. Okay, okay, okay. So what if I ask you to find a solid move? What is one of the most solid moves of this board that you can possibly find? And the reason why we're going to find one of the most solid moves on this board that we can possibly find is because right now, this was the profit. So can we profit more than that? Because think about it. Think about the game in the current state right now. Territory, right? Territory. Territory. What about potential? Where's the potential for white? Not really much not really much potential, right? Not not a whole lot of potential. But black has a whole bunch of potential. Like this is still like a questionable area for uh, for black right now. So we play a nice solid territorial move while we have the greater potential seems like we're going to have a good lead. So black plays here. He's solidifying the corner. He's laying claim to the bottom. While he has all that potential. So rather than doing something down here or here, or up here, or whatever. He's securing himself a ton of territory, claiming the lead in this game. White has no choice but to reduce now. How old is this game? A couple of days. White has no choice but to reduce now. Because, I mean, you can't let your opponent get something like this, right? This move would be insane. Why wouldn't he play F? 16 and then knight's move. The knight you, knight's move have Aji. Is it this one you're referring to? Like yeah, F16 is like this one or something. There's still Aji in the corner now when we attach, right? Because we're gonna Hane. Which means there's cross cuts, which means there's Hane. Uh if we play here. Is there a is there a Kobak there? 
So this move is actually not quite as solid as something like this. Because everyone can kill this move, I think, right? You probably kill it accidentally. It doesn't really even matter where you play. Uh, if you play here, it's dead. Because, like, the drop down is not Sente. But that's not Sente. I mean, we can't really get life in there. Uh, if we played here, we could probably kill it. I think it's a little bit of a worse idea. Whoops. A little bit of a worse idea, I think, because it gives rise to this little cutting point. If you have to protect it, maybe you have to go back and defend here then. It's eh, bad. Might be able to kill it anyway, but I think this would just kill, uh, kill it flat out. But with the with the small knight, yeah, a little bit of algae back there then. All right, plays there. We recognize that we don't want a move like this in for our opponent, so we move to reduce. That is a ton of territory. But blam. Is this equal to that? Oh no. Completely impossible. So it's time to try and build something. You can kind of see the idea here. We can maybe build this way. It's possible. It's not impossible. Maybe we can still build something as white. Maybe. He's gonna give it he's gonna give it a shot. We don't enclose here because of the surrounding stones now. Uh, things like this would be sente because of Aji in the corner. Sorry that my arm keeps cutting off here. I'm being pretty aggressive with the crop on the right-hand side of the board. Trying to take some stuff for himself. This move I thought was questionable. I kind of liked the idea of what he was trying to do, but this move seemed weird, especially when you see the attachment. Doesn't it feel a little strange? Time limit on this game. Um, that's a good question. I want to say this was, is it, was this a Samsung prelim? It's a good question. This is the Samsung Cup preliminary, so whatever the time settings were, in the Samsung Cup preliminary. So, yeah, this move feels weird. This move of lights, uh, not really sure, because like once we see this stone, working with starting on the board, we, it kind of feels like an ear reddening move. It's like, oh god, like I don't, I don't want to respond to this now. I don't want to respond to this at all because. Even game, yes. So white backs off. Black's like, oh, 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 give me more influence. Give me more influence. And this is a really good example of how just because a game is usually going to go a certain way, like we have a diagonal opening, the game usually goes to a territorial game, but it doesn't mean it has to. That's one of the great things about Go. It's like, oh yeah, you, diagonal is usually going to go for a, you, you go for a more, more of a territorial approach, and then blam, we see a humongous influential game being kind of played out in center of the board. That is why you must remain flexible in your thinking. 
You can't just be like, this is a, this is an influential game. No matter what happens, this is a, or not sorry, this isn't a, this is a territorial game. No matter what happens, it's got to be a territorial game. It's like no, no, it doesn't. Getting some getting some corner, getting some corner, getting some corner. Black drops back because the Hane would be huge. And now, for those of you who just learned about sector lines, this is sector line. So the stone is behind enemy lines quite severely. White says it's okay. I'm going to reduce. I'm going to reduce. I'm going to reduce. I'm going to reduce. And black says, okay, you reduce. I don't need everything. I just need enough. That's another thing people make a mistake on. By people, I mean amateurs. Myself included. We would look at this and we would be like, No, I'm gonna try and kill everything. Maybe you succeed, maybe you don't, and all of these stones connect. But gosh darn it, you're gonna try to kill it all because why not? Instead... He's profiting. It's like this is this is my area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh line. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Just gonna borrow some strength here. Don't mind us. Just uh, grabbing a bit of strength here. That's all. Just a little bit of strength, a little tiny bit of strength, and a little bit of seventh line territory. Getting in some free reductions. That's not a new move. That that would be a move twice. That's something you only try if your opponent gets up and goes to buy a drink or use the restroom then while they're gone you could be like your move sir what oh yeah my last move was here <laughs> not that I'm suggesting any of you find upstanding individuals should do something like that I'm just saying that's the only time you'd want to try it Starting to go through. Gonna have to defend. Alright. Now, once again, we are defended. We are defended. So there's a lot of you people who are probably wanting to play and surround this group, right? You know you want to. But we're not. We're gonna play the largest room on the board. What's the largest move on the board right now? What is the largest move? It's not trying to kill the middle stones. So what is it really? What is it really? I'm playing a basic game, people. Where is that large move? The right hand side, yes. This area is kind of, kind of open still, ain't it? So yeah, yeah, we can go. Pincer. Make sure our opponent can't lay claim to this side, because if our opponent has this and this, then we are this. Also, also, wall, wall, wall. It's also an attack, right? It's a very, very large skill attack. So, it stands to reason that our opponent defends himself. Which means... We get to keep attacking. 
Trying to cut through. D -d 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 Denied. Can we go wonder? Denied. So to attach to escape. Black plays aggressively, going after all them shapies. Time to try to come out. Now we're profiting as our opponent runs away from us. Still profiting as our opponent runs away from us because we got the Atari in the coming out. So our opponent has to respond again. Doesn't want to, but he has to. And now we can cut off. Got as strong as we possibly could. Now we're going to attack the center. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. But white's got a lot of shape. White's got a lot of shape. Probably not going to be able to kill it. Probably not going to be able to kill it. But, you know, we can give it a few pokes. It looks like it's alive. But is it alive really? Play some forcing moves, see how it responds. Looks like it's kind of alive. Cause like we kinda have to like get rid of this eye somehow if we're gonna go after it still. It's got like attachments here. It's got connections there. It looks it looks okay. So black calls no joy. End game. Sente for white. Black throws in the corner. And now here is where I was shocked. Cause at this point, I was like, okay, okay, okay. I, I like these little I like these little uh, problems that occur in the game. Like what's the best way to defend this, right? Because like we've got we've got like things like this, and we've got like solid connections. Uh, maybe we can do this as another defense. So I, I was fairly confident I knew the proper defense here. And then I flicked the next move in the game when I was first looking at it, and I saw that one instead. I admit, there is a certain level of confusion that I now possess. What do you think? Is that corner dead? Is that corner alive? Next move threatens to cut. The cut works. Nah, I don't think you would I don't think you would bet the corner on a centered kill. It's too difficult. Too difficult, too difficult. He sees life. He saw life here. If he's wrong, he loses the game. So he took this. And if he was wrong about his reading right now, he loses because he took a stone. That, that Cho Chahan, man, he crazy. What do you think? Can we, can we kill this? What do you think? What do you think? Can we kill it? What do you think? Is it dead? Can't do that one, otherwise he's alive. I'm 
Okay. So far, so good. But still not dead. White, that does not kill white. Still does not kill white. Boop, 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 boop. But does anyone see the answer now? This is kind of like, uh, it reminds me of one of those Igo Hatsuyoron problems, right? It's like, we're at that position, and then like you have moves you have to be able to read out to see the actual solution. It reminds me of one of those problems. Oh god, those things are annoying. We alive? How are we alive, Sentaro? Sentaro, how are we alive? Because White's alive right now, right? I don't get it. Yeah, so look at this. He extends. Extends. Throws in. Connects. Now we see! Now we can see! Because after the turn... After the turn... We can Hane! Because if our opponent blocks us... If our opponent blocks us, we have an Atari. And that Atari can't be connected or he's dead. So by Atari here, he has to take, which means the cut here isn't a problem. So we get to connect. So that's interesting. He got to take because he read the connection underneath. Oh, did, did that kind of go, did that, did that miss some of you? Right, so if you place here as white, we get to play here in Atari, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can't play here because that would be take for black then, because after here we only have one liberty, so we can't do that, which means we can't poke at the cutting point, so we can only take right now, and then thus black can take the stone. So that's why that works. Why didn't Black just defend normally? Because he could take an extra point. He saw that, you know what? I'm alive there regardless. I'm going to take here and make myself stronger. Uh, thank you for the follow. I wish I could say I could read that, but I can't. I'll thank you properly after the game. So, white pokes, black connects, defends, depends on what this does, doesn't it? White seeking a humongo corno. And now Black says, you're not alive yet, sir. I would like to draw it to your attention that you haven't lived. I took the liberty of getting stronger, repeatedly, and you didn't defend your group. You didn't defend your group. Poking at the cutting point. And now surrounded. Bats, I said I was crazy. Oh, did I miss something? Bats. 
That's what I thought at the beginning. Oh, yeah, it's that center. I see. I see, I see, I see. Um, yes and no. Because in, in order to play this way, you have to be able to read out that you are actually okay here. Because you wouldn't just say, you know what, I'm going to let my stones die, because I think I can do something here. There had to be a way for you to read the connection. Or I don't think you would have risked the variation. Which is why I was getting everyone focused on seeing if they found a way to still be okay here. That way they're not going all in on a kill in the middle, right? So does this die? That's a new question on everyone's on everyone's mind. Does this die? Well, we've got forcing moves. We got ourselves a ton of forcing moves. And this is so cute. All of you need to study this. Every mother fracking one of you needs to study this. Because we're attacking the center. Black's like, I'm going to try and play here and connect up to live. Or white says, sorry. And then black's like, I'm going to connect here. You can do that. Because if you give me this, I'll, I'll call it even Steven. We'll, we'll be square if you just give me this while you live. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. It's a great exchange. Go ahead and do it. So he's seeking to profit while White's trying to live. He's not trying to kill it. Cho Chahan is the embodiment of the turtle's dream. He really is. He really is. That right there is the embodiment of the turtle's dream. It's like I'm I'm just gonna try and I'm just gonna try and live. That's all I'm doing. Or not live, uh profit while attacking you. Not trying to kill you. Yeah, where have you heard that revolutionary idea? Isn't it crazy? But White's like, you're trying to what? No, you will not profit while you are attacking me, sir. You are crazy. Black says, are you sure? And White said, yes. Nothing for you here. Good day. So, all right. Now they're going to have a talk. A little bit. A little bit of a talk. Little, little bit of a conversation. Little bit of a conversation. It's like, are you really alive? We're trying to poke at every possible thing. Um, I lost the move. Oh, right. We block. That would be a tar into a stone. So we are going to extend, I think. Yes, we are. And then we're going to go in a tari, right? Yes, we are. Then we're going to take. Into a double atari. into Atari. Isn't that sad? Oh, look how sad that is. He's he's not dying. It's also why you wouldn't want to get the corner just to see if you can kill the middle. Hard to do. Hard to do. So we're going back to profit. Going back for the profits. Cutting. 
Atari. Making a couple of points. Just making a couple of points. Whoa. Getting a little messy. Getting very messy. Oh my god. Sorry. My late game stone handling is sucks. Connect it on up. Is that actually a work? Couldn't we Atari here? No, we can't, because it, what well, can't we? Uh, yeah, do, 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 and then, the, okay. I guess it doesn't work. Wait, what if we just take that and don't do that? Then we do that, do that, do, and then we can just drop down? Yeah, can't we, son of a, can't we just play here? Oh god. Sorry, light game stone handling, really terrible. Oh, that is next move. Okay. Really? We're gonna co this? this? Seems a little strange. Can I live here? Says white. No, says black. Black says, I'm not even going to bother. White says, thank you. So I'm just going to Atari. And connect this messed up uh, bit of stones. Get to Atari again, which is quite nice. Connect. And take a couple of points. At this stage, White has no choice but to admit he is behind. And he resigns the game. Black got some points here, Black got some points here, Black can get a couple of points more here. This is all his. This isn't bad, but the end game is not going his way. So white resigns. So I thought this was interesting for a couple of reasons. Example of a diagonal game, and how despite diagonal being mostly for territory, we saw a bit of an influential slant on a, territory, on a typically territorial game, which is quite nice. We saw attacking for profit, not just for killing, but for profiting. We had a, a pleasure of seeing an interesting life and death problem that a lot of people would probably uh, get wrong. So there, there were a lot of parts of this game that were a pleasure to watch, I think. Chochahan is my new spirit animal. <laughs> uh, that's the emoticon that we need. We, we need a Chochahan emoticon. With, like, his face all haloed. Cute moves, best part? The cute moves were, cute moves were, were really good, too, yeah. The one over here, and then the threat for Ko. And then the cut to make it larger into it. Yeah, that was cool. I like that, too. So I hope you enjoyed this game. Hope you enjoyed the Real Board series. Haven't had it in, I don't know how long. It's been a while since we had a real board stream. B is stupid ahead, like 15, I think. Yeah, probably. But again, a lot of that's for the profit, right? Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I mean, that right there is like your 15 points. So pretty cool game. Pretty cool game. Ah, now the cleanup.